everybody. Welcome to Emma and Auntie's adventure. Here we go. <laughs> One, two, three, four, let's explore. Hermione, bodies, and so much more. Five, six, seven, eight, open the gate. He's in our minds, I cannot wait. One, two, three, four, let's explore. Hermione, bodies, and so much more. Five, six, seven, eight, open the gate. Hi, Emma. Hi, Auntie. Emma, why are you out of breath? Oh, sorry, Auntie. I was running around outside before I came over and looks like I'm all sweaty now. That's okay, Emma. That happens to all of us when we run around on a hot day like today. But Auntie, I feel like I get sweaty so easily. Auntie, why do we have to sweat? It's so gross. Well, Emma, although we feel yucky when we sweat, sweating is very important. Really, Auntie? Yes, Emma. I think it's time to learn about the sticky world of sweating and why it's so important. What do you think? Yes, let's do it, Auntie. I can't wait. Okay. So let's first look at reasons why we would sweat. What do you think, Emma? Why do you think we would sweat? Hmm, well, when I'm hot, I sweat. Perfect, so overheating. What else? Hmm, well, when I'm nervous, I sweat or scared. Like, like when I saw a scary spider the other day. <laughs> yes, okay, so being scared or nervous. What else? Hmm. Oh, oh, I know. When I tried a spicy Cheeto of mom's yesterday, I got really sweaty. Okay, good. So when we eat or drink hot things, both spicy things or hot in temperature. Great job, Emma. Thanks, Auntie. So when the body decides we need to sweat, our nerves and brain kick into high gear to make it happen. Fun fact, Emma. We have around 4 million sweat glands all over our body. Whoa, Auntie, 4 million? Yes. And all of these glands are connected to nerves, which is how they receive signals and messages from our brain to sweat. So how do we sweat, you ask? Well, when the body senses it needs to sweat, either when we are too hot, eating something spicy, or we get really nervous, the nerves send a signal quickly to the brain. Um, brain, Emma is too hot. Specifically, the signal gets sent to the hypothalamus, which is a part of the brain that controls temperature. Can you say hypothalamus, Emma? Hmm, hypothalamus, Auntie. Great. Okay, so let's say we're running outside on a hot day like today. So the nerves on our body sense we are hot and they say, yikes, Emma's getting too hot. And then they send signals to the hypothalamus, help, help, Emma is hot. The hypothalamus responds, no problem, I'm on it sending a signal back to the nerves that are connected to our sweat glands. All right, you little sweat glands, everyone listen up. Emma is way too hot and needs to sweat right now. Then the little sweat glands deep inside our skin start producing sweat. Wow, so Auntie, what is sweat anyway? Good question, Emma. Sweat is made up of water and salt, mostly sodium and chloride. This is the same salt we find in table salt. So when we need to sweat, fluid from blood vessels gets transferred over to the sweat glands quickly to start making sweat. Wow, Auntie. Okay, so now I know what sweat is and where it comes from, but Auntie, how does it help me cool down? Well, Emma, sweat on our skin is really good at absorbing or taking in heat. Essentially, it takes that heat and traps it in the watery sweat. 
Then the sweat gets taken up into the air to help us cool down. This is a process called evaporation. Can you say evaporation, Emma? Yes, evaporation, great. Okay, so as the sweat gets evaporated off our skin, it takes that trapped heat and releases it into the air, helping us cool down quickly. Whoa, that's great, Auntie. Now something to remember, when we get really hot, like if we're outside running around on a really hot day, our bodies will sweat and try to cool us down quickly, but our body can only produce a certain amount of sweat at one time. And if we get way too hot, it may not be able to keep up, which can cause us to get overheated and this can be very dangerous. Oh no, Auntie. So it's very important if we are getting too hot to get to a cool place quickly and to drink plenty of water to help out sweat glands and then we can produce more sweat. Also, remember, if we're not drinking enough water and sweat comes from water, how can we expect our sweat glands to make sweat quickly? So, we need to make sure we're drinking plenty of water every day. Good to know, Auntie. Trivia time, Emma. Ooh, I love trivia time. Okay, let's hear it, Auntie. I'm ready. So, what parts of our body have the most sweat glands? Auntie, um, maybe the armpits? I mean, I sweat a lot from there. Hmm, I'm, I'm not sure. Nope, it's actually the palms of our hands and the soles of our feet, and also our foreheads. Whoa, that's crazy, Auntie. It's important to know this because if we're really hot, the first places to put cold water to cool us down should be our hands, our feet, and our forehead. So. Next time you're running around outside and you get way too hot, get a cool towel and put it on your forehead or you can soak your hands or feet in cold water. That's a good idea, Auntie. That's great. Okay, so another question. Does the water in our sweat stink? Hmm, well, of course, Auntie. I mean, obviously. Actually, wrong, Emma. Sweat itself, the water and the salts, actually doesn't stink. It's actually the bacteria in our skin that mixes with the sweat that gives it that smell. Oh, really, Auntie? That's good to know. All right, Emma, time to sing a fun song about sweating. Are you ready? Um, for a song, always, Auntie. All right, here we go. Let's go outside to play and make my sweat glands work. <laughs> Let's do it. All right. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. Hey, everyone. 
If you like all these types of videos and you want to see more of Auntie and I, please subscribe and hit that notification button so that way you can see more videos just like this. Yeah, we can't wait to show more about the human body and help you learn. Click that like button, please!